So there's this relationship between the KSP value and the solubility, and the KSP actually tells you how soluble things are in solution. So if you know a KSP or if you've looked up a KSP, then that could give you information about how much you could dissolve of a specific compound um, as the solute in your solution. So this could be really practical for laboratory kind of exercises where you want to try to reach the solubility limit. You don't want to super saturate your solution. So you want to make sure to get right at that cusp so you can get in the maximum amount of solute as possible. This would be one way to do that. So let's think about a problem like this, where we have uh, calcium sulfate, um, and it's looking for the solubility in grams per liter. Again, uh, this kind of looks like a density, a density of particles, because concentration is essentially a density, is how tightly packed those solute particles are in your solution. And if the KSP for this process, this dissolution and solution process, is 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, then what is the solubility? Now this may not readily smack of an ice box to you, but the fact that you're given an equilibrium constant is usually a good indication. Uh, most of what we've seen before, again, if you've been following videos, is ice boxes relating to acids and bases and acid base, weak acid base equilibria and buffers and all that kind of good stuff. So this one's a little bit different, but now we're thinking about solubility of fairly insoluble compounds. And again, if you were to look up in a solubility table, what the solubility of calcium sulfate is, you'd probably see that it's pretty insoluble. Um, and you can tell that based on the KSP value here. Okay, so let's think icebox. We're gonna disregard this whole column here in our icebox because it's a pure solid, so it's not gonna be part of our equilibrium constant expression. If I throw this solid calcium sulfate into solution, initially there's going to be no ions in solution. So I threw it into pure water, um, and now it's starting to dissolve. As it's dissolving, then it's going to change with a molar quantity related to the balanced chemical equation and to the solubility of the ions in solution. So whatever that X is, kind of this X, our concentration at equilibrium, this is really going to give us the solubility. Um, so the solubility in a molar sense, right? Because we think about this in terms of molarity. This is the number of moles that would dissolve per liter. Okay, so this is kind of the thinking then. Now if we think about the KSP expression for this, it's going to be equal to the calcium ion concentration times the sulfate. And it's one to one, so we don't have any exponents here. And this is going to be equal to the value that we were given in the problem above, 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And now we know that at equilibrium we have x of each of my ions because it's one to one. So x squared is equal to my 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And when I take the square root of both sides, then I end up with x is equal to plus or minus. 4.9 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, we know that it can't be a negative value, and it can, mathematically speaking, be a negative value because we're taking the square root of our x squared, and so we know that mathematically it could be a positive or a negative number, but because that x represents a physical quantity, it represents our concentration here, it can't be the negative value. So that means that our concentrations are positive 4.9 times 10 to the negative third molar. And now it's asking in the original question, it asked for a con uh, the solubility in grams per liter. So we need to do some conversion here. So we have 4.9 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter of our calcium sulfate. So in order to get to grams per liter, I need to find the molar mass of calcium sulfate. So when I go to the periodic table and I look up the molar mass of calcium sulfate, I end up with 136.15 grams per mole. So I have one mole here of my calcium sulfate for 136.15 grams. 
and I'm going to be limited by my two significant figures here. So when I do my dimensional analysis, my moles will divide out. I'll be left with grams per liter, and I end up with two significant figures, 0.67 grams per liter, which isn't that many, right? A one liter of solution, right? If you think about half of a two liter bottle is one liter, um, and then 0.67 grams is very small. This is a G. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a G. Grams per liter. So 0.67, it's fairly low solubility. That would be the solubility limit. If you wanted to try to pack more of it in there, then you'd have to do something to the conditions in order to supersaturate the solution. But under standard conditions where the KSP is measured, probably at about 25 degrees Celsius and normal kind of one atmosphere of pressure, then this is what the situation is. Okay, so this is a handy way to, if you know your KSP values, to figure out the solubility. And, um, and you can go the opposite direction too. If you know the solubility, you can figure out your KSP.